Hello, everybody. Welcome into the Letterman Row headquarters for Letterman Live, brought to you by Byers Auto. Spring is complete. That's That's got to be music to an Ohio State player's ears, right, Zach? It's done. This is the best time <laughs> of the year, right? You know you get to go into to summer uh, workouts, conditioning. It's hard, but it's a little bit more relaxed. You know, hey, you don't have to deal with the school as much. It's like the best of both worlds, right? Spring football is done. The hard practices are done, and school's done, too. Yeah, he's Zach Bourne. I'm Austin Ward. I'm burying the lead there. We're talking about the Ohio State spring game here on the Letterman Live, brought to you by Byers Auto. It, the weather was great, Zach. It was a lovely Phenomenal. April afternoon. Phenomenal, yeah. Weather was great. So it's good for recruiting. We'll talk to Burn later on in the show about that. Uh, the guys got out there for one more, that 15th workout. Ryan Day's got a camp under his belt. Yep. Jeff Halfley, Greg Madison, those new guys. I think they got a lot accomplished. And I think mainly you and I will talk about this a lot over the next couple of months, yep. I bet. But that defense is starting to look a little bit more like the silver bullets are accustomed to. They really are. And, you know, everyone wants to talk about the spring game and big thing, but a lot of that work that you talked about was done in the spring right. practices. And um, I, I think we're really going to see this year the way that defense develops where, you know, normally we've seen an Ohio State defense come out and don't really know their identity in the beginning of the year. And then as the season goes on towards the end of the year, it's like, where's this defense been all year, right? I think they found their identity in the spring. We, we, we've we seen glimpses of it. I know that coaching staff's going to have them ready to go in August camp. And I know those guys are going to come out firing. And it's going to be back to the Silver Bullet defense. When you're looking at it from a player's perspective and, and, and analyzing what you see, the spring game, you have to take with so many grains of salt, right? Yep. You're just going to have limited stuff out there. We didn't see Brendan White doing much. Right. You had Jordan Fuller was out there. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's going to be a lot of guys who don't play in the spring game. That's why spring game is a glorified scrimmage, right? A lot of people are like, oh, it's a spring game. It is what it is. A lot of that stuff really happens. The games really happen in the in the scrimmages that happen in the spring, mm -hmm. not so much the spring game. But this is what I saw from the spring game, and it's also what we saw in spring practices. The guys seemed like they were running around and were able to play the game, right? So many times last year we saw guys were almost like they weren't sure of what they were supposed to be doing. You know, they weren't sure of their responsibilities. It almost seemed like guys are a lot more stress-free, so to speak. They're able to just read and react, which we talk all yeah. the time about from, from a defensive standpoint. But they're actually running around, running to the football, and be able to make plays. We saw, you know, the, the interceptions that happened. We, it, It's just Everyone, you can tell when a defense is playing free with kind of a swagger and they're able to do things instead of sitting there and second guess themselves the entire time. And the thing is about the spring game, when you, everyone wants to break it down, and we will, we're going to talk about it. Garrett yeah. Wilson put up a poster. Moss. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, every, every single scrimmage or any, any game, right? He yeah. always mosses someone. It wasn't a surprise to see him do it, but he got to do it in the shoe. A guy I talked about with you since the very first practice that caught my eye, Jalen Gill. Yep. I think he caught seven balls in that game. So, does it mean that both of those guys are going to be starters? No. Does it mean they're going to be in the rotation? Probably does. Um, but it, it also goes back to we, we saw the quarterbacks throw the football. Yep. Justin Fields, four for 13. There's probably some people that left not very confident. Not thrilled, right? What does that mean to you? It's a, it goes back to it's the spring yeah. game, right? Um, you know, it, in the spring game, you try and make it vanilla. Um, it, you know, yeah, you're right. Jalen Gill had a great game, right? Uh, we saw Benjamin Victor with a 98-yard right. yeah. touchdown, right? So we saw some guys flash, but there are so many guys that flash in the spring, but it doesn't correlate to the fall, mm -hmm. right? And we see some guys who struggle really badly in the spring, and come the fall, just something clicks, right? It, who would have thought Brendan White may have been the defensive MVP <laughs> at the end of last year after the spring game, right? Yep. I mean, no one would have thought that. Not even close. Um, and so, it, you know... It, Justin Fields coming into a new system. Um, I, I think something he's going to gain confidence. I think Ryan Day is going to work with him throughout the summer. But let's not, I mean, Matthew Baldwin is, we've said this from day one, he's a very good quarterback. That competition is there. I just think the thing that sets Justin Fields apart, we saw it a little bit in the spring game, is just his ability with his feet, the way mm -hmm. he can run. Uh, you know, almost force teams to have a spy on him to create more one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside. I, I don't, I don't put too much in the four okay. for thirteen. If he's going four for thirteen in week one next year, then we may have some issues. But <laughs> he, he's going to build on it. That'll be a different discussion. And, and you know, look to be fair to him as well. You go into the expectation. You're the highest rated recruit that Ohio yep. State has ever landed. People are saying that he's a, a mashup between Dwayne Haskins and Braxton Miller. But he's only been in the system for six weeks and 15 yep. practices. Like, I don't think that he was supposed to go out there and set the world on fire. And guess who struggled in the spring game last year? Dwayne Haskins. Like, it's just not a situation 
where you're I, both I was just about to say, I feel like we had the same conversation last year with Dwayne Haskins, right? Because Joe Burrow had the better day. Exactly, right? Everyone left the spring game last year saying Joe Burrow was going to be the starting quarterback. He outperformed Dwayne Haskins by a million percent, and we saw how everything unfolded. Here's the other thing. You know, uh, uh, Justin Fields is, you're right, he's the highest rated recruit Ohio State's ever had. He's got sky high expectations. But let's put it out there. It, Guys can be nervous, right? He may have wanted to go out there and light it up, yeah. and we see it all the time, right? It's a spring game. You want to put on a, a show. It's like an all-star game. How many times have we seen you know, LeBron James can go out there and not <laughs> play his best? You know, yeah. but the, the kid isn't Superman, you know, and, and that's what people have to realize. It, he probably did have some nerves going out in the shoe for the first time, having what, what was the crowd, 65,000, whatever it was. So, it, yeah, I mean, it, let the kid be. He's fine, 4 for 13. We saw some flashes on what he can do. I would expect a lot more than, hey, come the season, he's got to show up. All right, so before we let you out of here on Letterman Live, brought to you by Byers Auto, Zach, I think the answer is obvious here, but I'm going to ask it to you anyway. What is the most glaring weakness or position of need heading into the summer here? I don't know if it's position and need. I think it's the biggest question is offensive line, right? I mean, gosh, from a from a defensive back standpoint, I think they're deep, right, mm -hmm. with Akuda and Brendan White and, I mean, all those guys, yeah. right? I mean, we know that they're stacked. The linebackers, some of the young guys are, are showing up like Mitchell, but all, all the guys are returning, right? We know what they can yeah. do. Obviously, defensive line is probably the it's best crazy. there is. And we know what the, the young wide receiver group can do. I mean, across the board, right, we know guys are going to step yeah. up. We know there's a lot of talent. It's just the biggest question mark is offensive line. We know that they've got some guys like Josh Myers uh, that are going to be new starters mm -hmm. this year. You know, Brandon Bowen's going to be back probably starting, who we haven't seen in two years from injuries. But there's just question marks around him, right? I, I think the other position groups that you're like, ah, oh, we don't really know because we lost – you know guys are going to step up. You know guys are going to be successful because they've shown flashes. Um, just the, the offensive line, there's guys who haven't played football yeah. before. Doesn't help when you have Thayer Munford on the sideline, Jonah Jackson, the graduate transfer from Rutgers, not here yet. Those are two big pieces. Yep. You know, you just kind of have to patchwork together when you're in the spring. But now it's over. Attention goes to the summer. Zach Bourne's still going to be breaking it down with us here at Letterman Row all summer long. So we're going to cut Zach loose. And Letterman Live is going to roll along, brought to you by Buyers Auto, and we're going to talk to Berm about some recruiting. All right, so we switch gears here from Letterman Row HQ, and we bring in Berm from Recruiting HQ. Uh, always a busy weekend for Ohio State with the spring game. This one was no exception, as Ryan Day had his first one. A number of big-time targets in the building. Legend Cavazos had committed on Friday night. So from a big-picture perspective, Berm, how would you evaluate the weekend? Well, I mean, I think most people – look at a weekend like the spring weekend spring game weekend and expect to see a bevy of commitments and a flurry of activity but that's just not the way it is right now um at ohio state that they don't do the the whole big uh parade of things like the concerts and stuff like they're, they're doing at oklahoma and texas and all these other schools to try to gain interest in the program they want these weekends to be about relationship building and getting kids to feel comfortable with the new coaching staff Obviously, adding the commitment of Cavazos on Friday night was expected. It was not expected that he would show up in Columbus, uh, and he actually landed on Friday night um, and spent the weekend with Jack Miller and, and Jackson Smith and Jigba, but also more importantly with Paris Johnson and Darion Henry. Uh, you know, as they're really trying to build that class, it was the first time for Paris Johnson to meet um, uh, Trey Larue, so it was the first opportunity for those offensive line commits from Ohio to all hang out together. Um, so it was a big weekend in that sense for Ohio State, but as, as far as the actual 2020 class and the building of that class, it, it wasn't about adding anybody new. It was about um, really just cementing some some relationships. So as you look forward and, and some of these visitors in particular that you, you wrote about Marvin Harrison Jr. yesterday, we've talked about Paris Johnson a thousand times. So is it shake down to Cincinnati is the most important city for 2020 and Philadelphia is the most important for 2021? Well, I mean, it's starting to work out that way. The, the reality is if you look at the, the in-state recruiting for the class of 2020, Ohio State is hoping that Paris Johnson stays committed to the Buckeyes and talking to a few of the commits who are around him this weekend. They said they feel good that he's going to and that they're not really worried about him. But, you know, it's recruiting. It's 2019 and, and weird stuff happens. Um, Darion Henry, I just I just don't feel like – any other school has the combination of things he's looking for, and I think that the Buckeyes will will end up winning that battle down the road. 
They did offer Jaheim Thomas a few weeks ago, and that changes the dynamic of recruiting that duo. But, you know, what, what you're looking at is that Ohio remains extremely important in 2020 with Mike Trennan um, out of Columbus and, and Juton McLean down in Fairfield. They're still trying to figure that out. But the class of 2021, as you alluded to, with Kyle McCord, the quarterback, uh, and Marvin Harrison Jr., the wide receiver out of St. Joseph's Prep in, in Philadelphia, that pair, I would be shocked if both of them aren't committed to Ohio State by the end of the summer. Uh, and it certainly, with Jack Sawyer already in the mix, it sets up that 2021 class to get really going quickly. The Buckeyes have uh, offers out to to a number of players in the state, uh, including Sawyer, Lorenzo Styles, Reed Carrico, um, Najee Story. All those guys were on campus this weekend, and they're all getting very com- comfortable with each other and getting familiar with what the Buckeyes are doing. But having McCord, that quarterback, if if he's – in and it, it seems like that's the plan he told me that he was planning on making a decision by the uh, end of may or beginning of june the only other school i think he wants to visit is clemson i know buckeye fans keep getting you know they kind of get chills when you mention clemson all of a sudden it, it makes you just feel very uncomfortable anytime clemson's involved because they're doing uh their recruiting is at a level that i don't think most people can understand but uh that duo is going to help ohio state really launch that 2021 class we're talking recruiting with Berm on Letterman Live, brought to you by Byers Auto. Uh, it's funny. I mean, it almost feels like if there is a recruiting battle of any import for Ohio State, Alabama and Clemson have to be in the mix. I mean, it, this is still a situation. There's, You wrote about the wait-and-see approach with Ryan Day. I think these are still the three most powerful recruiting brands that exist. I mean, is there is anybody even edging into the picture that the Buckeyes would have to be concerned about at this point? Yeah, I mean, Georgia is a big one for Ohio State to worry about, especially in the class of 2020. The Buckeyes were the clear-cut favorite for five-star linebacker Mikhail Sherman for a long time. Georgia now is in that position. Georgia is the team that really started to pull Brian Brzee away from Ohio State uh, a, a year ago. Now he's going to commit to Clemson in, in, a, in, a, in a week. Uh, but those are the teams that are really the the real problem. So um, it, it's it's Georgia, it's Alabama, it's uh Clemson and then for Ohio State and the type of kids they're recruiting uh it's oftentimes it's Notre Dame and, and so it's this really small handful of schools that Ohio State's actually recruiting against um but you'll see more and more it's about Clemson and Notre Dame and Stanford and, and a couple other programs out west that are really stepping up it's not really Ohio State versus Alabama very much which is I think surprising to people but they're just recruiting different types of people did you just casually drop in some national recruiting news into this this segment or well i mean he, he announced that he, his decision date is april 23rd he's definitely not committing to iowa state so okay. and i would feel very confident saying he's committing to clemson on the 23rd but um you know right now like i said clemson's doing things at a level that i just don't think a lot of people can understand it's like they have this strange cult you down there you walk into clemson and all of a sudden you walk out and you're in a daze and you're talking about jesus and Dabo, and that's it so i don't know i don't know i don't know what's in the water but uh, they're, they're, they're the program to really be concerned about when it comes to players that Ohio State really wants. There's only a couple schools that I think have the ability to change someone's mind uh, away from the Buckeyes right now. And Clemson is one. Georgia is one. Alabama is one. So when you look at a guy like Julian Fleming, the top-ranked receiver in 2020, who I feel very confident is going to end up at Ohio State, this last weekend he spent the weekend at Alabama – Clemson's a team he wants to visit again. Georgia's where he wants to take an official visit. So it's always that same handful of schools because that is the creme, of the, the creme de la creme nationally right now. All right, Brian, before you get out of here, uh, my understanding is that the coaching staff gets back on the road on Thursday, uh, get to work on the trail. What's going to be the priority uh, for Ohio State as they scatter? Well, I mean, I think the most interesting thing will be to see where the coaches end up. Uh, the big time importance right now is for Tony Alford to get out west and get to Arizona to talk to Bajan Robinson, the five-star running back from Tucson, and to get up to uh, Fresno, California to meet with Kendall Milton after his visit to Ohio State a week ago. The Buckeyes put themselves in a really great position with Kendall Milton to the point where I would almost call them the leader at this point, but he had visits uh, scheduled this month still to Alabama and Georgia uh, and LSU, so that whole swing is very important, so it's important for Alford to get out there. Um, but for Ryan Day, it's about getting to around Ohio, especially down in Cincinnati, and figuring things out with the uh, the Queen City trio. 
And, and then for him, it's about getting back down south and, and reestablishing the foothold Ohio State had in Georgia and Florida in the last few years because that area is never going to stop being of, of huge importance on the recruiting trail. And right now, with the loss of Zach Smith, who was very um, active in Florida as a recruiter, they haven't had somebody really step up down there. Um, Brian Hartline is is working the South Florida area, and he's as you know as we've seen over the last year, one of the best recruiters on the staff. But um, right, Al Washington's in Georgia, and that's where Ryan Day was previously. So I think that's an area that's important. But and then Larry Johnson needs to get over to the East Coast and and really figure out what's going on with the uh, Washington D.C. guys like Raheem Jarrett, uh, Mikhail Sherman, and those. But um, they're going to be on the road. They're going to be busy, and uh, we'll certainly try our best to keep up with where they're at. But those guys travel; um, it, it, their, their travel schedules are pretty insane. Yeah, great stuff from Berm there on Letterman Live, brought to you by Buyers Auto. We didn't have time to get to Game of Thrones with Berm. He's got thoughts on that. You can follow him on Twitter I mean, for that. I do. At I do. I'm not going to talk about it, though. Brand sucks, but that's fine. <laughs> I mean, I don't even care if he's the Night King. I hope he is the Night King so that he ends up losing the whole thing because Brand sucks that much. All right. And I didn't get to talk about the brand, jackets, so you can follow me for builder. that. More like Brand the Boring. There's, there's a thousand sites that are going to break down Game of Thrones. We're going to stick to Ohio State football here uh, on Letterman Row. In, in the Lonely Island, of course. Well, yeah, but that's a different show. This is Letterman Live. Yeah. It's brought to you by Byers Auto. That's been Berm. Appreciate Zach Bourne for hanging out with us too. I'm Austin Ward, and we'll see you next week. Bye.